Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share yet another video about the Asus Z13 for 2025, because as many of you know, this past week, Asus finally allowed YouTubers that have the brand new pre-production Z13 in hand to discuss actual performance. And I think what we learned is really clear. The Strix Halo from AMD is an amazing chip that is able to equal, if not best, the performance of the acronym, which of course has an Intel 13th Gen i9 with an RTX 4070 with eight gigs of VRAM, and that is amazing. No question about it, it's pretty much what Apple has been marketing with the M4 and the whole series of M chips about their GPU performance, but alive and well on an x86 machine, which means we can actually do things with it beyond the Apple ecosystem. So this is a breakthrough, no doubt. However, it seems that the thing people are missing, or at least YouTubers, many YouTubers are not discussing, because this is more of a, a marketing uh, shtick, which I totally understand and respect. I'm a YouTuber as well, right? Is that it seems to me the Strix Halo, AMD's chip, really doesn't belong in this product. Now, the reason I say that, and this will be unpopular, is that it really isn't accomplishing anything that we weren't already getting uh, from the Z13 lineup. If anything, it's pushing the Z13 lineup in a different direction. Hear me out. So, as I just mentioned, performance is a one-for-one one, and slightly in favor of the Strix Halo based on what we've seen so far, competing directly with this, which was the top-end spec for $2,500 uh, last gen. The problem here is, is that we're not really getting a true gain in battery life, which you would have expected with the greater efficiency of the AMD uh, silicon. I say that because we moved from slightly over 50 watt hours of battery on this machine to now 70 in the new Z13, which means uh, the battery gains that I've seen, and so have many of you, are not really because of the efficiency of the new chip. And I'm not saying it's not more efficient than Intel. I'm sure that it is more efficient, but not by enough to really get excited about. And then the other thing is pricing. The whole premise of eliminating the NVIDIA chip here, if you can actually compete with a discrete solution using integrated GPUs, would be the argument of cost savings. That is literally vacant from this discussion because the starting price for the new Z13 is 2300 US dollars. I'll remind you, as I said at the top of this video, this was 2500 That was the top of the entire lineup. So when I said that I feel like the AMD Strix Halo shouldn't be in this product, it's that is a big part of the reason. Um, number one, again, performance matches or slightly exceeds what we were getting from the Intel NVIDIA combination. So we're not getting a real boost in performance. Granted, you can now share the system RAM for VRAM, which is amazing. Can't do that here. But that's totally a my, your mileage may vary situation because that isn't going to help you with everything across the board. It's going to be app and game specific. And then in addition to that, without the cost actually going down, the other kicker is that the power brick has gotten larger. So instead of being able to carry something convenient like this uh, and use Type-C for charging, you now will have a 200 watt proprietary brick that's about three times the size of this. Uh, granted, this is not the one that came with the machine, but this is a, a good example of that the Z13 was aimed at being a portable powerhouse tablet. It will still be a, a portable powerhouse tablet, but it will no longer have, in my opinion, the same use case scenario that it did because the new generation really isn't an improvement, but rather a repositioning of the brand, proof of concept. And that's what the Z13 has always been about, especially this machine, absolutely proof of concept. Uh, but the problem is it works in real world. And I say problem because it's a problem for the new generation. So again, uh, we're not really seeing a, a great jump in battery life from the new Strix Halo. We are seeing amazing performance, but it's performance that's mostly meeting that 4060 to 4070 yield with eight gigs of VRAM in a portable low voltage package like this, where you're getting you know an average of 65 watts to the GPU. And really the only way the new Z13 would be amazing would be if it kept the original pricing structure from the previous generation. Because if this meant that now any user could pick up that base model for, let's say, sixteen or $1,700, have 32 gigs of RAM, and performance like the acronym that actually exceeds it in many different uh, applications, that would be amazing. And then you have the benefit of the new XG Mobile. Now, 
I made the bet of picking up the 4090 last gen XG Mobile, 16 gigs of VRAM, 330 watts total power, really an ideal eGPU hub. The problem here is it only works with this and of course the Ally, not even the Ally X uh, because they got rid of the XG Mobile proprietary port in favor of just moving to Thunderbolt 5. And I think that was the right choice. Again, the Z13 2025 is a problem because it does not have Thunderbolt 5. I've discussed this in a previous video, which means the new 5090 is probably going to be right on par with this 4090. And that, again, reiterates the point I'm making through the course of this video, that while the Strix Halo is an amazing chip, I feel like it is not well served in this platform and offering. Again, it's not really about mobility. It's about performance in the absence of a GPU. That's a great thing, but not for a tablet that was all about gaming performance because we're not pushing the envelope in gaming performance. We're pushing the envelope in all other areas, not every, and we're doing so, again, at the expense of literal cost, the physical footprint, the proprietary charging now taking over for Type-C, which is the most convenient way to power devices on Earth, and then the XG Mobile, a step forward with being Thunderbolt 5 and open compatibility with all devices, but it certainly, I didn't see pricing for it yet, but I know it's going to be more than the $2,000 this unit commanded. And again, on sale for $1,300 roughly, this is still giving me 16 gigs of VRAM and a 4090, which is going to deliver desktop class performance combined with this. So uh, even that 150 watt power going to the 4090, you're still getting 3090 Ti or even close to 4080 desktop performance with no bottleneck situation. I've tested this. It is amazing. It gets a little loud but literally one of the most clean modular setups outside of that janky uh, cable, but you're getting more lanes, PCIe lanes, than you will be with the brand new 2025 5090 until you can get a Thunderbolt 5 version of this machine. So again, long story short, Strix Halo from AMD does set a new benchmark in the world of computing, no question about it. I just feel that for me personally, I wonder for many of you as well who are enthusiasts who love the Z13 for what it represents, do you think this was an actual step forward, a step to the side, or a step backwards? I think it was a total step backwards because while the Strix Halo is amazing, the fact that it can match this, we're not getting any benefit from that from a pricing standpoint point or portability. We didn't get a new OLED display, so they also didn't really change the game on the display, which I think is probably the biggest lacking area from the Z13 lineup. And that's not a knock against the LCD that they use, but to only go up to 180 hertz uh, from the 165 in this machine was a BS bump. So really, the star of the show is the Strix Halo, and unfortunately, that star, I feel like, as I've mentioned over and over, would be better served in a traditional Ultrabook, maybe, where... People are maybe going to, to do some light gaming, but it's not a dedicated gaming machine. And hopefully you all understand why I'm saying that, since it's really that chip is gaming capable, but it's really just redefining maybe what the Intel Arc has done with Lunar Lake so far, which is all of a sudden give us full HD gaming. I mean, this whole integrated GPU rush that started with AMD and the handhelds, portable consoles, it's making sense that it's migrating, but to migrate into what is supposed to be a premium gaming experience at those costs, I just don't think add up. So kudos to AMD for the Strix Halo. It's an amazing piece of silicon that is changing x86 machines. I just don't think this was the right one to change it with. And I'm curious what all of you think. Again, I think my bet on the 4090 here was a great one considering the whole package isn't really appealing that much to me. Again, the battery life, yes, that's nice not at the expense of getting rid of Type-C charging. That is a backwards move. And then again, you would think if NVIDIA was no longer being paid uh, to throw a 4070, a 4060, or a 4050 in here, we'd have some savings. AMD has always been a value proposition. Somehow Asus decided that because you're getting performance close to, if not exceeding the acronym, they're going to price it close to the acronym. And that was, in my opinion, a fatal mistake. But we'll see. And I want to hear what all of you think. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them at that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.